three. Hey, it's Mark Podolsky, Land Geek, with your favorite niche real estate website, www.thelandgeek.com. We got a really small, intimate roundtable today. And um, let's just start with Scott Bossman, dude, buddy, the nightcap OG. Scott, how are you? Great, Mark. How are you? I'm great. This is like the quickest intro ever. We've got on the mend from a horrific car accident, but we're so happy he's okay. The Big Papa. I love it when you call me Big Papa. Tate Litchfield. Hey, guys. Happy to be back. It's been a little bit, but, uh, you know, I've enjoyed listening to the last two podcasts. It's interesting when you're not on the podcast and you listen to the podcast and you think, oh, wait, I would have said this there. It's just a whole different vibe, but uh, the show goes on. I'm happy to be back on today. Yeah, I'm glad. And you're, you're relatively pain Pain free, yeah. I mean, uh, I'm on the mend. That's great. All right. Well, we're sorry we're missing Mimi, the terror center. We're missing Eric, the technician. We're missing the Zen, the Zen master, uh, Mike Zano. But you know who's here? You know him. You love him. Scott Todd from scotttodd.net, landmodo.com. If you're not automating your Craigslist, your Facebook postings, postingdomination.com forward slash the land geek. And of course, learn anything about anything, investor ninjas. Com. Scott Todd, how are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm great. I'm great. So this week's roundtable, coming off of a phenomenal boot camp, which unfortunately Tate had to miss in Phoenix, are what are those common mental blocks that we see people, you know, kind of stopping them from getting to the next level in this business? So maybe it's a fear of, you know, X, Y, or Z. Let's just start with the dude buddy, uh, Scott Bossman. Scott, what's some of the common mental blocks you see our students having? I think there are a number of them. Um, but, but I would say that uh, a common one is kind of fear of putting faith in yourself that you can do this. Like, believing in yourself that you can do this. And there's a couple of components to that. Uh, one, you know, you need to need to believe that your investment uh, in this business, in the training, in whatever, uh, a high investment in your time, a high investment in a program, something like that, is, is going to pay back uh, in, in spades uh, if you just put forth the effort and if you just execute. And I think a lot of people are a little bit hesitant to commit to something, whether it's, whether it's time, whether it's uh, putting money into their business uh, or training or something like that, uh, because they're, they're just fearful uh, because uh, it's the unknown. They don't, they don't know what's on the horizon. Uh, they, don't, um, uh, they don't know how to get there. And they have a hard time just taking the plunge and taking the leap to kind of entrust their pathway to others. Because as, as coaches, uh, as, as people in this community, we're going to help you up the mountain. It doesn't have to be a journey where you're all alone. And I, I feel like sometimes people, um, they put them on a path, they put themselves on a pathway of um, kind of solitude because they feel like they need to bootstrap it to, to prove to themselves that this works. We have overwhelming evidence that it works. So I think Putting the faith in the community and the coaches and the and the programs that we have is 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 sufficient enough to get on the right path. Yeah, I call it Philip Ma syndrome. So Philip Ma, you know, if you talk to him, he uh, he was one of our one-on-one -on -one coaching clients, and he made this amazing video about his journey. But he literally like wouldn't tell his wife what he was doing until he proved it to himself that it worked. But if you talk to them, they'll say the biggest mistake I ever made was wasting nine months of trying to do this on my own and going through the trials and tribulations and all the pain when I could have just avoided it and gone straight to the coaching because then like his business took off and he did, you know, deal after deal after deal. But, you know, it's, it's almost like you, you don't know what you don't know as far as, you know, how little you would have to suffer if you just had somebody who's you know, like a Sherpa. Like, okay, I'm gonna go up Mount Everest 
I go, I can, maybe I'll do it on my own. I want to prove myself. I can do this. We just go with the Sherpa. He's already done it a thousand times. And, um, but I think it is a block. I think there is a lot of fear about, you know, having that belief in yourself, that fear that, okay, just because Tate and Scott and Mike and Mimi and Eric, Scott, Todd, and all these other people can do it. Well, I'm not sure I can do it. Um, even though like, if you look at me, like, come on, there's nothing special about me. I can do this. Anyone can do it. But shortening that learning curve, I think, um, is what truly makes it more enjoyable having that community um, and just going to bed at night, knowing that you're going to get this massive return on your time and investment versus stumbling around in the dark, trying to pull this here and there. But it, it is a common fear for sure. And I, and I get it um, for sure. Tate, how about you? What's, what's some of the common mental blocks you see? You know, a couple, I'm glad we're talking about this because I see a few of them um, on a regular basis. And one would be this fear of getting stuck with something. People who are getting into this business are always afraid that if they buy a piece of land, they're going to be the one guy in the room who can't sell it, or they're going to buy the one piece of property that is a dud that nobody wants. And the reality is everything sells. And I know that's cliche to say, but the truth of the matter is you cannot be a land investor if you ag adopt this one in one out approach. And what I mean by that is you can't simply buy one property, sell it, and then do it over and over again. At some point, you got to put yourself um, and your, your money on the line and say, you know what, I'm going to buy eight of these. And once you buy eight of these and you continue to follow the steps, it's amazing what happens. The deal flow starts coming, the leads start coming in more frequently, and then very quickly, you're gonna turn around and you're gonna be contacting me on the mastermind call and you're gonna say, hey, uh, I got this issue where I bought a bunch of property and I wasn't having any act action on it and then I sold it all in two weeks and now I'm out of land. What should I do next? So this one in, one out approach when it comes to land investing, I don't believe it works. I think it, it it might work on some properties, but if you're going to do a volume of deals, you need to have inventory, right? People like options. So that would be the first mental block that I see. The other one has to go with uh, kind of what you just said, Mark, about am I too late to the party? If Mark's having such good success and if we got the great Scott Todd closing deal after deal after deal, is there any room for a guy like me? Right? And, and the answer is yes, obviously. The market's so big. Scott's working in three counties or something like that. Mark, you're working in a handful. I mean, there's so many counties out there that the land geek hasn't even mailed to that there's plenty of room for everyone. This pie is huge. You're not looking for the whole thing. Neither is Mark, neither is Scott, neither am I, right? We're looking all for our little piece of it. And that piece can be however big you want it to be. So there's plenty of room for everybody here. Uh, we're probably the only market in the world where we're inviting other people to come join us. Like, hey, we got this amazing gig going on over here. Scott Todd hasn't worked since uh, 2018. Come learn about what he's doing and how he's able to do this. Uh, figure it out and we'll show you everything that you need to know. So we're probably the only ones out there, I think. So those are the two mental blocks that I see. No, it's so true. I mean, you know, when you look at the market, there literally is no competition. You, me, a million people could go in this niche. We're all, we'll all run out of money before we run out of deal flow. But I think that is a common fear is like, you think, well, all these people are doing this. Well, in reality, they're not um, doing it. Like, just think about how big your, your RIA meetings are, your local RIA meeting, 100 people in the room, 99 of them are wholesalers, landlords, and, um, and flippers. You and I are the only land people. HETV, the DIY network, there's no flip this land, even though Scott Todd keeps pitching them on that show. Before picture, raw land. After picture, raw land. It's just not a thing and it's not sexy, but I think passive income is sexy without headaches. But most people really, you know, generally speaking, won't find this niche very sexy at all. And um, therefore it's, it's always sort of gonna be this non-competitive niche. Um, Scott Todd, 
How about you? What's, what's some common mental blocks? I think uh, I think what one of the mental blocks is that um, that okay, I, and it's almost like what Tate said. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna buy one piece of property and just kind of test it out, right? Like I'm gonna go see this thing work. And you can do that. I think that what a lot of times you miss is that you're actually starting a business, right? Like there's there's a there is a big difference here because you're going into the land investing business. It's a key word. I think that a lot of people uh, skim over. So yeah, you can go buy a piece of land and you can go sell that piece of land, no problem. But honestly, you, you go do that, it's gonna bring in, you know, let's say a hundred bucks a month for you or, or less. Well, okay, that, that by itself is not, um, not the most exciting part of this business. What's, what is exciting is, is when you have like a lot of these notes, you know, hundreds of these notes. I, I gotta tell you, man, like, I got I got an email from someone the other day and, and they're they're saying, hey, um, you know, can can you tell me what my balance is, even though they have access to the great geekpay.io. So I'm like, who is this cat? Like, how long have they been paying me? I log in and I look. Well, they've been paying me since 2016. I feel bad. Like, I didn't even know their name. Like, wow. So, you know, like when you think about it like that aspect, it's not the one note. That the one note's cool. It's the hundreds of notes. And you, the only way you're going to get to hundreds of notes is if you start to build infrastructure and you start to lay down the foundation of the business and you start to like chisel away at the stuff and making sure along the way that you're not building yourself another job because too many times people they are like, oh, I don't want to pay a VA $3 an hour. Like they would rather scrub the list. And to me, I'd rather, I don't know, go out and, and do fun things as opposed to scrub the list. So you gotta, you gotta build the right time horizon here. You gotta give yourself, it's not a one year deal, okay? It's a multi-year commitment that you're making here and you have to be committed to like chiseling away constantly at all of the pieces to build in the infrastructure, to build in everything that you need so that you can really step out and truly start to enjoy the passive income of the profits that are coming in every single month. Yeah, absolutely. It kind of, um, I, I couldn't agree more. Getting back to Tate's point about that fear of being stuck with land, we even have our guarantee with the toolkit that if you buy it the way we're training you to buy it, you won't get stuck with it. Sell it to us, we'll buy it. So even that fear is, is unfounded. Um, as well as just the fact that we guarantee that you'll, if you do the steps in the toolkit, we guarantee that this program's not gonna cost you anything. So we even take that away. Um, but get, getting back to, to Scott's point is that, that sort of that fear of, of, uh, of just continually working the business as a business, as opposed to this, you know, one off buy sell kind of like what, what Tate said. I think what, what Scott said was even deeper than in echoing what, what Tate said. I, I love when, when Scott, you know, to quote Scott, Scott Todd, you know, you don't want to be a chicken, uh, franchise with no chickens. And oftentimes that, there's that fear. You want it, you buy a piece of property. You don't want to keep buying until you sell it. And, and that is a common mental block for sure. I, I think one of the common mental blocks I see, especially from one-on-one -on -one coaching clients is the money aspect of it. They get to a certain point and then they think, oh, I have to self fund. Um, I've got to sell for cash. Like, um, you know, like I remember uh, listening to the, the round table, was it last week or two weeks ago? It's, it was titled, Shh, don't tell Mark I did a cash deal. And, 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 uh, and Eric Peterson was like, yeah, you know, I had this other deal and I didn't want to, you know, go out and get the money for it. So I flipped this piece of property for cash. Nothing wrong with it, but I would still make the argument that, he should still have people lined up giving him money and helping them so that he has more flexibility with the money piece of this. You don't have to use your own money. And even though, you know, Scott Todd made $17,000 cash on a flip, nothing wrong with it. But his argument was different than Eric's. It was his buyer that wanted to do it. Scott wasn't saying he wasn't dictating the market based on his cash flow needs. I need to sell this property for cash because I need to redeploy it for other deals. 
he has other money waiting in the wings to do other deals. He didn't need it. It was just, he was being flexible with it. So I have nothing against cash, by the way. Um, I just, I have, I'm really more on the side of flexibility and having this abundance mindset that the real value in this niche is buying these assets 25, 30 cents on the dollar. If you do that, there's so much money out there and there's no reason uh, to limit yourself because you have a mental block about money. I know that was kind of long-winded. Scott Boss, what are your thoughts? No, I'm, I'm glad you brought that up because I just had a conversation with a gentleman the other day. He's, he's new to land investing. He's been doing this for one year. He's done 80 deals. But do you know how many are terms deals? Two. Oh, he's done wow. 78 cash deals over the last year, and he's completely burnt out on this business because it, it is not a passive income business for him. He is, he's making cash on, on his deals and, and redeploying the cash into more deals, but none of it is passive, and he's completely burnt out. He's created another job for himself. And I think, uh, you know, one of the one of the one of the main mantras that I've learned in this business from the beginning from you guys who were my coaches is that that passive income, although it will not happen right away, uh, it, it's a process. Like Scott Todd said, it could be a three to five year process. But when you have a hundred, two hundred notes coming in, uh, and multiple five figures of income uh, coming in next month, and if something happened and I couldn't do my land business for a couple months and have that income coming in. There's no better sense of security and feeling that true passive income. Right, Tate? <laughs> yeah, I was just going to say, like, heaven forbid you get in a car accident and you break your leg and you stay, you know, three weeks in a bed. Uh, I didn't even sweat it. It was like, well, you know, it might mean we're going to hit not hit some goals this next week, but no worries. I've got money coming in. Don't need to, don't need to stress about the bills getting paid. Honestly, my wife looked at me and said, hey, are we going to be okay? I said, you're not even going to notice it, right? You're not going to notice any difference in our lifestyle. And that was, it, it probably was the most comforting phrase I've ever said, was you won't even notice it. And, and that's when I realized, like, there's no better job than this. There's no better career opportunity. There's no better investment strategy than one that you don't feel when you get hurt. Wait a minute, yeah, no, it's wait. true. Yeah. Whoa, 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 whoa. Uh -oh. Hold on, hold on. Uh-oh. 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 Did your wife believe you when you said that? that well, yeah. You're she... not going to notice it? Yeah. And the reason I challenge you on that is, let me tell you what she's going to notice. One, I'm sure you're going to be grumpy from not bike riding. Okay. And two, she did you're notice gonna, that. Like, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. But yeah. I, meant, she... I meant like financially, like, hey, you're not going to worry about it. We're still going to have the same amount of money. You're going to have to deal with a grumpy old uh, because, miserable husband for the next couple of weeks because his leg's broken, but. She's going to want to go get a job to get away from you. That's likely. Yeah. She has been spending more time at the gym lately. So uh, maybe, maybe that has something to do with it. I'd say not. Right. Well, the yeah, other I thing mean, is she'll like yeah. walk me to my office and just kind of like, leave me there because I'm so immobile that I just kind of am stuck. So I'll be like, <laughs> Allison, Allison, and just kind of have to hang out here all day. But uh, no. she takes your scooter from you. Yeah, she'll just push it down the hallway a little bit further. So it's like, oh, I guess I'll just stay here. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, I think our, our ultimate goal is for you to build real wealth in this business and wealth being defined that you can work when you want, where you want, and with whom you want. So Tate doesn't have to clock in somewhere. He doesn't have to hobble up to an elevator in some big high-rise building, get there at a certain time, have to wear certain clothes because of the corporate culture. Even if he's wearing just a t-shirt and jeans, and that's a corporate culture, he has to wear it. Like it's not his, it's not, he doesn't, someone else is dictating his schedule. He can't just work where, when, and with whom he wants. And, and to me, that's real wealth, is that having that flexibility to say to your spouse, yeah, run on out, go work out for two hours. I can spend time with the baby, um, although Daisy's not a baby anymore, you know, but with the, 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 the toddler and, and do all that because I have the time. And so 
that's really what this is about. But if we go back to Scott Bossman's example of the guy that's flipping land all day long, he's just got a, a you know, maybe a better job than his other job, but he has to be there. He's got to be, you know, flipping and then redeploying and buying and selling. It's, it's, it's a hustle. And I mean, Mark, he doesn't have that. Don't you see yourself in that story too, a little bit? Cause wasn't that you I, yeah. for so many years, right? You no, just I, flipped I, and flipped yeah. and flipped. And eventually it was the biggest mistake I've ever made. Yeah. So kind of interesting. Mistake ever, yeah, those, those are my two biggest mistakes was not having a mentor um, when I first started and then flipping land. And of course, if I had a mentor, he would have told me or she would have told me, Hey, you got a, a subscription model here. Make this land cash flow. I'm like, Oh, that's genius. So um, yay for all of you. You don't have to make million dollar mistakes like me. I'm not, I'm not bitter about it. I'm happy, happy to do it. So um, not a problem, not a problem at all. But Scott Todd, any, any last words before uh, we go to our tip of the week? I would just say like, it's so easy to, uh, to talk yourself out of, out of something, right? Like it's so easy to, to even say right from the get go, well, and Tate alluded to this, like, oh, well, if all these people are doing it, the, the, the opportunities dried up. Mark, you and I were on a podcast today where we were interviewing someone for a podcast that will come out much later. And they were talking about like Airbnb. And, you know, as he's explained this, I'm going through in my mind saying like, oh, well, all the good locations must be off the market. Everybody's already contacted everybody. That really does show, and I'll call myself out, that really does show in a way that you kind of have a limiting belief because you don't realize just how big the world is, how many, and in my case, like how big the, the opportunity is. I limited it and I was willing to dismiss it by saying, oh, well, I'm sure all the good locations are gone. How do I know that? How do I know without further expansion or further uh, research on it? So if you find yourself saying, well, well, I, you know, all these people are doing this. I'm sure the opportunity's already passed. Well, it hasn't. You should, you owe it to yourself and to your family to go back and to like give it a once over and do some deeper research. Because what you will find is that the, the amount of land in this country of America is massive. We, we possibly can't buy it all individually. And you owe it to yourself and your family to, to not give up that fast without further expanding it and de looking deeper at it. Go, go do something, take action on it. Yeah, yeah, and you know, it, it's so true. And then as far as scaling it and getting the systems and getting to the point where you're 90% automated like all of us, I, I can't say it enough. You cannot penny pinch your way to wealth. At some point in time, you're gonna have to let go. You're gonna have to spend money, even if it's three bucks an hour on an inexpensive VA and start systematically getting yourself out of this business. So you have a freaking business and not a job. But so many people are fearful about, I mean, you know, I'm saying spending money, it's investing money so that you can go on and work on the real opportunities in this business, the higher dollar things, and don't do the $5 an hour work or $10 an hour work or $20 an hour work and, and start thinking like a CEO. But so many people are afraid to even just invest in, you know, the systems or the software or whatever it takes to save themselves that time so they can go and do more deals. Um, I, I think that's a common piece too. Do you see that, Tate? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And hey, listen, you know, I'll be the first one to admit it. I'm a fairly cheap guy. I don't like wasting money. But hiring a VA or getting a better, better education or working with a mentor, that's not wasting money. That's investing in myself. And I am always willing to do whatever it takes to expand my knowledge or learn a new skill or associate with people who are more successful than me. That's, that's a worthwhile uh, investment. So you can be cheap, but don't, be, uh, don't limit yourself and limit your own potential because uh, Mark said, I'm, I'm nothing special. I've just made it uh, my mission to surround myself with people who are like-minded and as driven as I am. And 
it's a great circle to be in. So yeah, don't hold yourself back. Yeah, no, I agree. I mean, I'm frugal. I'm not going to go out and, you know, pay retail for a big screen TV. But when it comes to building my business to the next level, then yeah, I mean, I want to get the best deals I can, but I'm going to invest as much as I can. I mean, I say it, I'll invest any amount of money if it'll save me time. Because again, it's the only finite resource I have. Um, and that we all have. But so often we, we forget that. And uh, it's just a, kind of a, a good reminder. But speaking of finite resources and speaking of saving you time, today's, flight, today's podcast is sponsored by Flight School. Learn more, just go to landgeek.com forward slash training. Over 16 weeks, have Scott Todd take you up that mountain of land investing quickly, efficiently, safely, and start building real wealth, real passive income, so that a year, 18 months, two years from now, you're working when you want, where you want, and with whom you want. And, uh, and you know, really let this business transform you and your family, for sure. Um, so just go to landgeek.com forward slash training. So we're at that point in the podcast, gentlemen, where we're going to ask for the tip of the week, a website, a resource, a book, something actionable for the art of passive income listeners to go improve their businesses, improve their lives. I'm going to call myself today. Mark, what do you got? You know why I'm calling on myself? Because I know that Gary, yeah. Mark Peterson is not going to be able to rip on it, which is so I'm Eric. Um, so my tip of the week is going to be a great book that I just recently finished called Indistractable by Nir Ayal. Nir Ayal. And um, he wrote Hooked, but an industry about how technology companies hook us. We get these dopamine hits, the way that they do it. But the antidote to that is his book, Indistractable, and the, the, the ways that you can uh, certainly um, get your attention back and have this sort of a deeper work in your workday to get more done, be more productive, and be, just be happier overall. And not constantly, you know, checking technology um, and, and, you know, having your hijacked, uh, having your attention hijacked by something external. So check out Indistractable. That is going to be my tip of the week. All right, Scott Bossman, are we good? Yeah, we're great, Mark. Thanks. Tate, are we good? Yeah, great podcast. Scott, do you have something you want to say about my tip? No, very good. Are we all good? All right, let's do this. One, two, three. Let freedom, freedom ring. ring. Man, jeez. Oh, I don't know if it was the internet there or what. Scott Todd's leggy. We, we got to get Eric, uh, Mimi, and Mike back on next round table. For sure. But um, yeah, I want to uh, just on this little bonus piece mention uh, at boot camp, Tony Grigio. So Tony comes up to us and says, You, Tate, and Scott have to open this all three together. And we're like, What is this thing? Well, Tate wasn't there. So Scott and I opened it with Tony. And sure enough, it was a very nice note and a gift card to none other than Panera Bread and Cheesecake Factory. My question is, is this a real gift? Tate, is it a gift? You know, I think absolutely. It is, <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm flattered. I'm honestly flattered. I can't say thank you enough, but it does make me wonder. I mean, has Scott succeeded in brainwashing everybody to make them think that I love the cheesecake? I mean, come on, Scott, has this always been your mission? Mark, is it uh, Mark's, Mark's question? It, Mark, I, I'm shocked that you even asked the question, right? Like, of course, it, it, just read the card. The card was like, you know, written with love, pure love. Of course, it was a, it was a genuine gift. And, uh, you know, it's really kind of cool. And I think, uh, I think what it shows is that, 
everybody knows that, that <laughs> Tate loves the Cheesecake Factory and Mark loves Panera Bread. You know, Mark I do loves, love the Mark cheese. loves Panera Bread. Yeah. Yeah, Mark. No, no. Scott, See, the running or, joke or is that it's for Scott years, Bossman that loves Panera Bread. Scott Bossman he, loves Panera Bread. You handed that. I think you handed that off to me because it, it's about the only coffee place in town I can go to for good Wi-Fi and and some quiet in the mornings. So yeah, I, I agree. I I, th I think it was a really really nice, thoughtful, funny gift to give us, and um, we are appreciative. And so Tony, if you're listening, thank you so much. It was great meeting you just at boot camp, but that was, that was really uh, very special. And, and the sentiments uh, meant a lot as well in, in all seriousness. Um, and of course I will be, um, you know, probably making myself a little video eating Scott Todd's favorite sandwich from Panera Bread um, <laughs> and sending it to him. And certainly, I mean, Tate, if I had to guess your favorite cheesecake at Cheesecake Factory, knowing you, Given your age, it's probably either something like Oreo <laughs> or uh, cookie dough. All right. You know, uh, I'm not really going to come back with any negative comeback because you're pretty close. Uh, I like the peanut butter. Uh, they have like a peanut butter one, which is really good. So maybe, I don't know. Is it bad that I like cookies? Huh? No, is that, I, is I that a crime? Cookies. It's not a crime. <laughs> Mark, oh, Mark, I think when you get when to you, our age, like you're, you're kind of doing like dolce de leche. Like oh, when I get to your age, sophisticated. I'm looking for like, hey, can I get the no fat, low calorie cheesecake? Right? Oh, that hurt. no, that hurt. He just went there, Ouch. man. Just, I went there. I mean, who I'm, bashes I'm, on Oreo cheesecake? I mean, seriously. You know what? I'm making a video of myself on the Peloton today. Just, just riding. And, and burning off those calories <laughs> of that <laughs> of that cheesecake while you are unfortunately unable stuck in your office because because your wife won't come and pick you up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, all right. Well, you know, and Tate, Mark, you if could... you if you go to if you go to Panera Bread to get that sandwich, you can get you can get a a Panera Bread Cuban, no problem. Just make sure you send a, me a video of that because then I'll go and show you the real Cuban. <laughs> you know those. I had a Cuba. I can't remember where we were. We were at, I don't remember. It was somewhere here in town. And I ordered a Cuban just because like I was, I was having the cravings. I was so disappointed, Scott. It was, it was such a letdown that like, I, I asked my wife to trade with me. I was like, Hey, I think you'll like this sandwich. And like, ah, uh, it was yeah, so know, disappointing. Yeah. Scott Boston, speaking of, of, you know, gifts, I mean, I think Tony's was a real gift, but I think Scott Todd ruining us on the Cuban. That's kind of cruel in a way. It's like, here, try this, guys. And oh, you can only get this at, at you know, in this area. Kind of not so great. Like, I would not do that to a friend. Just exactly. ruin them on something. On a, on a <laughs> no, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. You sandwich. take us, you take us to like this pizza place that's like so good it's like being right there in italy and like it's not like it's a chain i can i can go and do that what are you talking about yeah yeah I, 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 and i quote ruin you on pizza and like, i quote I, I can't get cubans oh. anymore tate it'll save you a trip to italy oh yeah i don't remember those words <laughs> right like he quoted himself he said tate it'll save you a trip to italy and then we ate and it was amazing and Pizza's I mean, not yeah. hard to take. I mean, we, we, we have our fish and chips. I haven't eaten fish and chips since, well, I had fish and chips with you, man. Yeah, that was good. Moral of the Tate, story is we like to eat. Yeah. Did Tate ruin us on buffets? I oh, dropped yes. I dropped the mic there. Yeah. You did yeah. drop the mic on that thing. Yeah. That was that was crazy. Bacchanal. Eating a buffet or anything Bacchanal. since then. <laughs> yeah, if you're, yeah, if you're I still if, full. Uh, or Scott, so check out Pomo Pizzeria. It'll save you a trip to Italy. I got to give a shout out, Mark. Our dear friend, Jeff Detmer, uh, it's election day for him. So uh, by the time this comes out, he'll have won. And from now on, we will have to address him as Mr. President. No kidding. I looked it up. That's what he told me. I asked him today. I said, when you win, what am I going to have to call you? Uh, he'll be referred to as Mr. President. So. Um, 
exciting news for him. We're going to have a, a very, very honorable president on our next mastermind call. It's going to be awesome. So wow. great job, Jeff. Well, Mr. President, Jeff Detmer, congratulations. And yeah. uh, I'm excited. I'm excited to see uh, the changes that, uh, that happened in that county with the Mr. President. Yeah, there's no better better. If you guys don't know Jeff, I mean, you're missing out. He's one of the most genuine guys in our community. He'd do anything for you. So, uh, but he, really he's the kind of guy like that gets it done. Like I remember in the VIP room, like he was like, okay, now, you know, like, like an hour later, he's like, I worked on it. I got it done. Like he, he, the, he's mass of action. And so this guy being in charge of this County, like they're, he, this, this could just be the stepping stone to being governor of Ohio for him. Like it's, he's just going to turn around. Sky's the limit, man. He's that, Sky's the he's, limit. he's that kind of guy for sure. And he's got time because he's got all this passive income coming in from land and uh, his other real estate projects. So good for you, Jeff. I, I'm sorry, Mr. 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 President. Yeah. Thanks for bringing that up. Yeah. All right. Well, I'm going to go um, figure out what I'm going to do for lunch because uh, it's almost one o'clock here and I have been doing my intermittent fasting. I'll be eating anything except a Cuban sandwich. So sky's the limit for me. We, we went to that restaurant on uh, Saturday, by the way. Oh, you did? Yeah. I sent, I, I sent you guys a picture from outside that restaurant, actually. Yeah, I saw that. I wondered if it was in that area. I wanted to send you a picture of it, but I withheld. But since Mark's like dogging on me a little bit, I figured I had to drop the bomb on him. How, how am I dogging on you that you would introduce us to something so good? No, no, no. You're, you're, you're saying like you were going to go to Panera Bread, use the card and send me my favorite picture. My favorite picture of my favorite sandwich. Yeah, I can't, I can't get a Cuban though. Right. Maybe I could just, you know. Okay. It's okay. When, listen, you're coming to Tampa next year. So, yeah, I, I'll hook you up. Yeah, we'll, we'll fly to, to uh, we could. some cool spot. Yeah. Shh, don't tell your wife. Shh. I won't. <laughs> you I won't. better end it now, Mark. You better end it now. That's right. That's right. All right. Thanks, guys. See you later. Thanks, guys.